Hey everybody, today's video I'm going to go over all the modifications I've done to this bike. They're pretty much all worth it and I'm kind of a cheapskate so there are some things that maybe could be done better. But let's just start from the front to back. I did finally just put on some new brakes because of all this heavier stuff I've put on. I got this heavy battery, I've got the heavy tires and everything like that so I figured I needed to upgrade the brakes. Uh, these are the 203 millimeter rotors and they were about $35 a piece. I had to add an extra bracket on each because each bracket, the front forks are actually designed for 160 so then they had it stepped up with a bracket to get to 180 and I had to get another bracket to step it up to 203. There is a bracket you can get that will go straight from 160 to 203 it was out of stock at the time. I just got a notification in my email that it's back in stock, but I don't need it. So it is out there. Everything in here, I will post links in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But yeah, those brakes have been working fantastic. Um, it's not like I have a whole lot more noticeable stopping power, but I know for sure it's gonna wear a lot less on my brake pads, which is the main reason why I got it. Stopping power should be improved too, for sure but it's the wearing of my brake pads that I wanted to prevent. Since we're up front, we'll just keep going here. These fenders I got off Amazon, they're really cheap, you just zip tie them on. I think I paid less than $15 for them. They work well. The back one doesn't quite stick out far enough to prevent water from coming up, so if you like to ride in the rain, these probably aren't the best fenders for you. I just wanted some fenders to help keep the rocks from peppering and, and wrecking the bike, just a little bit, you know. The next upgrade is a Kuntig controller. It's a 35 amp Kuntig controller. And now I just upgraded to the color LCD instead of the black and white. For both of these, the 35 amp and the color LCD, you can still get them for less than $100 for sure. You might have to go on AliExpress, that color display. I went on AliExpress, I ordered it, and it came 47 days after I ordered it which is a long time, but I suppose because of this coronavirus stuff, I'm sure that's why. Normally it takes about 23 days, 25 days for me to get stuff from them. The 35 amp controller gives me a ton more acceleration. I can literally pull wheelies with this thing with no pedal. I do have to set my wake back a little bit, you know, to do it, but it's easily done. Uh, you know, the stock controller, how when you take off sometimes you can hold the bike and it'll literally cut out. This controller will not cut out. You try and hold this bike back and you give it gas, it'll just go right up. So I love that. The color display is really easy to program compared to the other one, but the other one's not that hard to program either once you get the hang of it or you watch one of the videos to do it. If anybody has any trouble programming, just, uh, just hit me a message and I'll, I'll show you a YouTube link or give you the information you need to get it set up. It's really pretty easy. Since I did upgrade the controller, I did upgrade the wire going from the controller to the battery as well. I kept the original wire, but then I added another wire as well. So it's basically got double the wire, double the, it can handle double the amperage that the stock wire could. So that should be more than plenty. I just didn't want wires getting hot and melting, but it really isn't a problem. This controller never gets hot and this motor still never gets hot. So 35 amp, this thing can handle it easy. I know some people are probably gonna try the 45 amp, and if you do, just make sure you upgrade the wire. I think with the 35 amp, you could get away without upgrading that wire. I just want to be on the safe side. The wake stem riser. I wanted the stem, I wanted the handlebars up a little higher, so that's why I got this. It was like a $15 part on Amazon, and it's really easy to install. Now it looks a little bit dorkier, but people who know me know I really don't care about looks that much. I do a little bit. That's why I got rid of all these cheesy stickers on the back. I did keep I Heart Kentucky because even though it's full of hillbillies and stuff, I do love Kentucky. <laughs> uh, the Juice Bike Tail Light, which is pretty cheap. I don't remember how much I paid. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. You guys might know better than me. But that, that's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Now that I got the Kuntag controller, I lose the benefit of having that brake light come on, which kind of sucks, and I have it wired up so I have to push the button to get it to turn on, which kind of sucks too. 
And then another drawback with this controller is the headlight doesn't come on with the switch anymore. I had to add a toggle. And I know these things are going to really annoy people. So, like my dad, he didn't like the fact that he lost his brake light and the headlight. So I just put the um, stock controller back on for him. He's fine with it. The seat, I was thinking about getting the seat upgraded, but I'm going to wait till this tears or something before I do that. I know that Saul on Facebook does really good work and well he advertises the heck out of it too so he's making a go at it and I think he's going to do pretty be pretty successful. Another person likes to build battery on Facebook. So if you look up Mata Juice Bike, Rick Rowan, he's, he's a good battery builder. He's got all the equipment to build it and it's fun to do. If you're good at soldering and you're not scared of voltage, I'd say do it yourself because it's a lot of fun. But if you don't want to, he can hook you up with a battery and all kinds of wiring connectors and stuff like that. He's, he has fun with it. He does good. And then also I upgraded to the, what is it, 1128 Epoch freewheel in the back. That was one of the first modifications I did. And that is definitely worth it because I can do 30 miles an hour and it's just at the brink of hamstring now. We're before about 24, 25 miles an hour. I was hamster pedaling like crazy. So that if you can find it, I know they're selling out like mad, but you also need the tool too. So, which isn't too much. I think I paid $35. This was over a year ago before everybody was hot onto these freewheels. I paid $34.99 for the freewheel and I think $7 for the tool. And oh, back to the controller. This thing didn't really gain much top speed. On a full charge, on total flat ground, I will hit 30 miles an hour. But for some reason, it just doesn't want to seem to go any faster. I tried a different controller and that one still only got 30 miles an hour as well. So I feel like this motor back here is just limited to 30 miles an hour like it's all revved out or something that is I, I don't know that for sure but that is what i've found and for the people who have a surging issue as soon as i replaced this controller the surging issue went away i tried swapping the lcd thinking that was wet because see i bought i got two of them i got one of these for my dad and one of them for myself this was the original igg i think that's what it is campaign and I got these for a thousand bucks plus shipping each, which is a smoking deal. Some people actually got these for a thousand dollars shipping included. Getting back to the surging issue, I personally believe that the surging issue is in the wire somewhere. It's in the wire, the communication wire from the LCD to the controller. It's in that wire. Juiced, if you're listening, I'm almost certain it's in that wire. Because I've swapped out LCDs, I've swapped out controllers, none of it helps. As soon as I put in a Contag controller that has a different LCD and a different LCD wire that goes to the controller, it clears up completely. So I 100% believe that it's in that wire. Now I'm not saying it's 100% that I'm correct, but I 100% believe it. And last but certainly not least, we have the Shinko 241 tires, aka Golden Boys. These tires are one of my favorite mods too. They've been so nice. I don't have to worry about getting a flat tire. I don't have to buy slime. I did get the motorcycle tubes as well because I wanted something extra durable. And they've got the, the stronger, nicer valve stems on them as well. So that setup works really good. I would definitely, if you're gonna do anything, okay, let's say you've got just a 13 amp hour battery. These tires may not be for you. But if you plan on getting an extra battery, mounted somewhere, I say go for the tires. Even with the stock controller, it can handle the tires, it'll be fine. The stock controller is really wimpy though. If you want more acceleration and more snap right off the line, get, get, the, get the upgraded controller, but losing the headlight function and the taillight function is a little bit of a bummer. I haven't really researched it, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to get around that there's a workaround to where you got to open up the controller and there's some soldering and stuff you can do to make it so it will work with the switch. It does work with the switch one time. You turn it on and it never shuts back off again. So that's why I had to add that toggle switch. And that's the same with this tail light too. It's got power to it all the time. But yeah, this, this video is dragging on a little bit long so I'm going to end it right there. All in all, I'm happy with all the modifications I've done. 
I, there isn't anything that I dislike. As far as future modifications and customizations go, I don't know if I'm really going to do any more to it. Um, I got better things to spend my money on, you know. Food's getting pretty expensive. Look, somebody had a a camel crush. Did they crush it? They did crush it. Hopefully it doesn't have germs on it. I think it's been down here for a long time. And as far as like a review, I've had this thing for over a year and I haven't had any trouble with it whatsoever. It's been a really good bike. That's it guys. Everything's holding up good. The forks are holding up good. Uh, the bike's holding up good. The gears are holding up good. Even the shifter's holding up good. But I don't do a whole lot of shifting. I do go down a couple gears, but that's it. But anyway, yep, this video is getting way too long. I'm just going to wrap it up right there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.